All right, welcome to the Meet the Team pod. Um, my name is Ryan Eaton. I'm the marketing guy here. Brady is out. He's doing more important things. He just had a kid, so congrats to Brady. Um, today, I am joined here with Ben Lindsley. He is a lead sewer install technician. That's your official title, right? It is. Do you like another one? Do you have another title for yourself that you like more? <sighs> No, I think that fits me pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, yeah, Ben, just get us started with, tell us a little bit more about yourself. All right. So, uh, you know, I started here at Jolly in 2020, November. Um, I had uh, I had worked in the trades before, um, doing something a little different. I was doing some HVAC. Um, I ended up not really liking it. Uh, several months later, my brother-in-law, actually, Tyler, who has worked here before, um, told me to come give it a try. He had nothing but good things to say. So, uh, I applied, I got the job and three years it's been, and I'm still here. Heck yeah, man. What did you not like about HVAC? That's, um, to be honest with you, I was just really young and I was having a hard time, like not getting frustrated with like learning everything. It wasn't so much that I didn't like enjoy it, I guess. I just was probably not mature enough to like stick it out and try to put my all into it but I mean it worked out yeah (laughs) I love what you do now that's cool yeah what uh kind of brought you into the trades did you always like growing up were you always like yeah I'm gonna get in trades or uh no I actually wanted to be a cop for like the longest time um after high school I went and played baseball at UC Claremont for a little bit what position and I was a catcher and then uh, I realized that I was really only going to school because I wanted to play baseball. So I was like, I probably shouldn't do this anymore because I was actually doing well, but I just was not very happy. Um, and I, you know, I didn't want to do school. So um, I had talked to my parents a little bit and they were like, mm, you know, you should think about HVAC, which initially was the, the first one. Um, and then yeah, I told you how that went, but. Yeah, plumbing to me is the way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so when you started here, you started as a drain technician, correct? I did. So yeah, first one. Can you just tell me a little bit more about that, your experience kind of becoming one and and even kind of maybe the first few months of, of running your own truck. Yeah, okay. That was it was nothing like I thought it was gonna be. So I always thought like well, even when I got the job, I didn't really know what drain cleaning meant. I was just like, I'm getting my foot in the door, so I'll be able to, you know, find something that I really like. Um, and then I got here and my first call, it was like, <laughs> just poop and nasty smells and uh, a mess. But uh, I got used to it. The smells you get used to, except for grease, you don't get used to grease. Um, but yeah, it was cool kind of getting to learn that. Um, I think it helped me a lot with, I mean, you know, what I do now as far as like drainage and everything like that um but yeah it was cool getting to interact with customers i also um probably like a month into me having my own truck i got to train alex so that was cool i got to ride around with alex and we would alex is my older brother yeah yeah by yeah, so you got to train like your older brothers yeah. yeah how was that uh it was funny we i mean we have some funny stories of just like i mean sometimes we would literally get like the giggles on calls like we would be in someone's basement and I would pop a clean out open and then I would it would smell so bad especially when I first started so I'd like dry heave or something and then Alex would be losing it and I would you know we'd be like come on (laughs) but um yeah that was a a unique experience and I had a lot of fun doing it and I know Alex had a lot of fun too so (laughs) for sure so you're saying you get used to the smell. So are you like you basically saying like do you think you've burnt all of your? your like, I don't know. Like I how hope does that not. work? Like, but now it's just like you just do you drive heat like dry heat anymore? Or? No. Well, okay. So I mean, if it's like really bad, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. But and what is really bad? Like, what is that? Like, what's the last time that you feel like? I don't know. Like, a, talk about it. <laughs> actually, no. There, there was a job. There was a liner job down in Clifton that Eric, myself, and uh, Dylan LaRisha had done. And um, it had been clogged for, like, a while. And we had jackhammered this lady's floor up, and the the sewer was, like, three foot, three and a half foot deep inside. And um, 
it was a clay line. And after, you know, we had gotten everything exposed and dug up, um, we were all like, all right, who wants to cut open the pipe? And uh, Eric, bless him, was like, I'll do it. Um, so he took a spud bar and just busted it. And a bunch of, like, sewer gnats flew out, and it smelled horrible, horrible. Yeah. Me and Dylan were both like, ugh. <laughs> But Eric was Eric fine. Was just fine. No, Eric was fine. <laughs> just like, hey guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did not bug him. I did not bug him. Wow, that is wild. But yeah, that was very nasty. Yeah, so maybe just take me into like, so you went from a drain tech, and then you went over to kind of our sewer crew, mm-hmm. um, and then now you're actually a sewer lead. So maybe just yeah. talk about what what is a sewer crew? What do you guys do kind of daily? What does that look like? Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, like you said, after uh, drain cleaning, I got. Uh, the lucky opportunity to go over and, and start out as Randy's helper um, in excavation, which um, I learned a lot. Um, it's taught me everything to get me into the spot where I am now. Um, but pretty much, you know, we have our sewer advisors go out to, to jobs and uh, they'll run a sewer scope down the line to uh, do an examination on the sewer, see what kind of shape it's in, what's caused the issues that you're you're having. And, um, after that, you know, if it's, if it's bad enough where you need it fixed, then we'll, we'll come out and, uh, that's when we open your yard up with an, an excavator, uh, or your basement with a jackhammer and we'll, we'll dig down to your sewer and we'll, we'll cut out your old section and we'll put in some new PVC for you. Yeah. Yeah. So usually when something's like blocking, what is that? Like what, what causes the disruption in a, in a um, sewer line typically? I mean, it depends on what the, what the pipe is, but if it's cast iron, um, it rusts on the inside, so toilet paper and stuff over time will will start to catch on it. Also, I mean, just from water running across the bottom of the pipe, it kind of can thin the pipe out. So over time, you're, the pipe will literally lose its bottom. I've seen pipes where, I mean, the shape of it, you know, you got the whole bottom missing. Um, so then you'll just see rocks and stuff when you're cameraing, going down with the water. Um, clay, a lot of the times... It's just roots uh, from really bad separation. And then, I mean, roots grow into the sewer because of a leak. So, I mean, if you have roots in your sewer, then obviously you have an issue. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's good. What's one of the craziest things you've seen in, like, a, a line? Like, is there anything that... Um, I actually have a picture of it somewhere, but um, as far as roots go, I pulled out probably... like a six foot long section of roots that was like molded to the exact same shape of the pipe. Jeez. We, um, we, uh, hit the top of the pipe with a hammer and had enough of the pipe to where we could tie a rope around it. And then we hooked the rope to a tooth on the excavator bucket and we pulled it out and we were able to get the whole thing out. But yeah, that was wild too. That's crazy. Yeah. We might have to grab that picture from you. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. That's cool. Yeah, so uh, maybe let's shift gears a little bit and just go to, like, your personal life. Like, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So you played baseball. Do you still play, like, softball, family, anything like that? Um, I did play softball for a while, but my shoulder is shot. <laughs> I'm only 22. I turned 23 in, like, two weeks. But, I mean, yeah, it's my shoulder's bad. Um, so I quit playing that, but I do play basketball on Sundays, and I enjoy that a lot. Um, there's like five or six of us and we're not very good, but it's still fun. (laughs) Um, other than that, I I have a girlfriend, Mary of two years. Um, when I get off work, I go home and and we hang out and just, uh, watch TV and enjoy our spare time. Um, we do like to shop for stuff around the house. Um, maybe Bed Bath & Beyond, you don't know. No, no, I'm more of a, uh. Home Goods guy. There you go. Nice. <laughs> what kind of shows you guys into? Um, we watch like, it's like a, I guess a reality show. It's The Challenge. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's kind of like Survivor. Um, we've watched Game of Thrones, best show of all time. Uh, Peaky Blinders, second best show of all time. Um, yeah, pretty much. And then like thrillers, movies, uh, scary movies. We like stuff like that. Nice. Um, but she's in nursing school, and she graduates next spring, so that'll be nice. It'll be a, a lot of stress off of her back, so. Yeah, that'd be good, man. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, so when you're out, like, with friends or whatever, and, and they ask what you do, like, how do you explain that? Like, what do you what do you kind of tell them? And, like... I mean, most of them know what a plumber is, but honestly, they all, like... I mean, they think it's funny, but not, like, actually. I mean, when I was younger, I, I would make fun of plumbers. I would be like, oh, plumber crap, you know, just all that stuff. And then I was like, eh, now I'm a plumber. <laughs> but I love it. But, no, uh, a lot of them... The longer I've been doing it, a lot of them, I think, think it's cool, you know. And, uh, I mean, all my friends are in college, so, I mean, they're going, like, the business route. Um, and then some of them have graduated, and then some of them will be graduating this year because they went back for a master's and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, they're they're happy for me, and, yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, what would you, like, do you have, like, any, like, yeah, you're, you like you said, you're 22 going on 23, but you've lived a lot of lives in, at, at Old Jolly Plumbing, yeah. so, like, what would you kind of tell a kid that maybe is coming out of high school that maybe isn't sure, or how would you kind of uh, describe your experience? Um, well, first, I would say, I mean, you're young, so don't be afraid to make a decision and you not end up liking it. Um you know, I went to college for like, it was literally half a semester, and I was bummed out uh, that it wasn't going to work out because I got to play baseball, um, but I was excited to start something new, and um, I ended up liking it a lot more, and I would say, as far as like my age, you know, I'm 22, and all my friends are still like in school or just now getting out of school, and my girlfriend and I have bought a house, you know. Uh, joining the trades has done a lot for myself um, at a young age. So um, there's definitely a lot of good in it, um, but there's also, you know, good in going to college. You know, there's still plenty of things you can go and do with that. Um, so I would just say don't be afraid to to make a mistake because you're young no matter what, so you have time to yeah. fix it. Yeah. yeah. Change from age to plumbing yeah 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 do it yeah Let's see we're gonna work at dicks for a little bit be a footwear specialist <laughs> there you go <laughs> Kroger, maybe yeah <laughs> yep for sure that's awesome man that's cool yeah maybe let's uh talk a little bit more about like some crazy things that you've seen from a drain perspective that typically is you've you know you can pull some some pretty insane things out of people's uh toilets or anything like that yeah. does any do any stories come to mind from from your drain days so i surprisingly i don't really have that many crazy stories um i know like alex has pulled out like rats like actual rats not like you know like a big rat before he's seen them on the the sewer camera um mainly for me no i've i mean i've only really pulled out like i mean loads and loads and loads and loads of wet wipes i mean like I was sat at a house for longer than two hours, just sticking my cables in, pulling them out, sticking them in, pulling them out, sticking them in, pulling them out, sticking them in, pulling them out. Um, and then at that point, we were like, "This isn't, you know, <laughs> enough's enough. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. gotta use something else." <laughs> yeah, that's but crazy. So I, as a plumber, you would not recommend <laughs> flushing no, wipes. No, no, do not do that. <laughs> do not do that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I use them though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're too good. Not yes, too. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, so um, maybe from a sewer aspect though, like you guys are literally in the trenches. So like, what what's that like being in the trenches? What's some of the crazier things that happens? What what's going through your mind when you're like in that in that trench? Um, I love it. Uh, it's what my, I mean, it's what my dad's done all his life, not plumbing, but excavation. Um, so I think that's honestly probably where I got that from. I love working outside, um, unless it's raining or snowing and freezing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's fun. You're, uh, almost like on your own. You are on your own. Um, but it's nice, you know, being isolated to just you and your guys, um, and being able to do, you know, your own work and not worrying about having someone over your shoulder. Um, I always tell the customer, you know, if they're like, sorry for bugging you, I'm like, I'm at your house, you know, it's like, do whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, it's nice, uh, working outside and, uh, I enjoy being hands-on. Um, 
I've seen some crazy stuff in excavation as far as uh, we did a jackhammer. This was uh, Chris's like first week. We did a jackhammer job. And um, obviously we didn't know this before, but, you know, we started jackhammer and then we found out that their basement was like it was hollowed out underneath the concrete by like three, three inches probably. Whoa. And we had jackhammered up around the bathroom already because, I mean, when you jackhammer, your concrete falls in. So it's not like we could see that until we had removed it. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the next morning we came back because um, we had to put it on, like, stilts. And that was when we were, like, calling this one quits. And they had to get someone out there to, like, look at it and stuff. And they found out, like, the whole entire basement was hollowed out. So they had to, I mean... I'm not sure whatever happened, but I know that they had to have someone else come in and do, like, extensive work to their basement. They knew what caused it or just? I don't know. Um, we had talked about it because we had to send someone out there to, like, I guess the way you do that is you drill through the basement floor, mm-hmm. and then you can, like, stick something down there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they ended up finding out that the whole thing was like that. So That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. That's it long gone. Yeah, anything else? Any other the crazy stories from the excavation side of things. Mm. No, I feel like I don't really have that many crazy stories. No, no. I mean, you already said a few, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how would you rank your excavator skills? Um, honestly, this is going to sound bad, but I feel like I taught a lot. Um, you know, I taught myself a lot um, just from, like, okay, I guess it's not that bad. But, I mean, on, like, slow days or stuff, we have that spot behind the shop where we can just kind of take an excavator back there. Um, that's where I learned a lot from. Brandy let me dig a couple of times on site, um, and I did pretty good. But I would say when I first started, it was, I mean, I was good enough, but, like, now I am would say I'm – make the guys that I work with I would probably make their jobs a little bit easier by being able to like dig alongside the pipe or not worrying about breaking the pipe or you know stuff like that I would say I don't think I could go and you know do like big dirt work like all these other guys all these other companies do but I mean I would say I'm I'm pretty good like a eight and a half nine you're the best one here I would I would say so. Those, those guys probably would say the same things about themselves, but I would like to say that about myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what is going through your mind, like, as you're excavating? Like, you were just talking about, like, digging alongside the pipe. Like, I mean, there's a lot that kind of goes into it. What are some of the warning signs of, like, oh, I'm getting too close? Like, how do you adjust what's um, going through your mind when you're, when you're digging? Honestly, this is something I've talked to my dad about, too, is um, after you've run equipment for, like, long enough, the – the boom on the excavator literally just feels like an extension of your arm. So it's, I don't know, it sounds weird, but you can, like, feel tiny stuff in the joysticks when you're messing with it. Um, So, I mean, like, if you're doing pulls on dirt and then all of a sudden you feel, like, a little bit of tension, that's when you know you would stop, pull the bucket out and say, hey, let's shovel a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Other than that, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's just, it comes from doing it for so long um but i'm not necessarily i'm like just enjoying it it's almost like you know relaxing to me it's fun as a kid i mean it's like every kid's dream yeah yeah yeah, i was gonna say all the kids you know they even myself you know you're playing in the sand or playing in the dirt you have like bulldozers and dump trucks and excavators and stuff um that it's it's fun to me yeah and i take pride in it as well you know not that many people can do it Especially uh, my age or like Biddle's age, so it's fun being able to do that. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, maybe let's. Well, first, I do want to talk about like on that same line is the the danger of it, like, and yeah. and how maybe just like talk a little bit about the danger of it, and then have you ever had any close encounters of of that type of stuff? Um, so yeah, I mean anything over four feet, you want to have shoring in the ditch obviously for obvious reasons what are the obvious reasons for for people uh, like me that are yeah yeah um <laughs> uh, the i mean the the ditch can cave in on you and i mean a small amount of dirt you would think doesn't weigh that much but it can weigh a lot you know just 
like a cubic foot of it, I think is the measurement, but um, it weighs like some ridiculous amount. Um, but yeah, you can use hydraulic shoring, which is pretty much two like wooden boards and then um, a spreader, which you pump hydraulic fluid into and then it sticks its arms out and with pressure, it just keeps the walls uh, intact. Um, I haven't had any bad encounters with it. I've had encounters with it that are an inconvenience like you dig 10 15 foot down that's the main memory i have of of it uh was uh me and randy had a job uh, and we were like 15 16 foot deep and we had to get a trench box ordered like a big one so it had to be like drove in on a big truck and then we had to you know chain it with the excavator and drive it over there and drop it in mm-hmm. um before we could get that in um there was a, I mean probably like a 10 foot long section of the wall and then half the wall's height so probably like seven seven and a half feet mm-hmm. um we were just watching it waiting for it to go because we wanted to put the trench box in mm-hmm. um and you just slowly see the gap between, you know, the actual trench wall and the piece that's coming off. And it got bigger and bigger, and then the whole thing fell, and it was a giant thud. Jeez. So, I mean, it it is very dangerous, especially if you're not safe. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be safe. Yeah. What about, like, electric lines or anything like that? Anything? Gas lines, anything? I've never hit any utilities. I've actually been around it uh been around gas lines when they've gotten hit that's scary mm-hmm. um yeah so you're digging and and you hit yes yeah, so, i mean just... sometimes um you know you have 811 come out and mark where all the underground utilities would be um like fiber optic cable um internet um and then uh electric, electric. Yeah, yeah you yeah. said electric um yeah all that stuff um Sometimes they don't have or, like, can't get a good reading on something, so they have to go off of, like, blueprints, which could have been, you know, it could have been replaced and they didn't, you know, put anything down. Um, And then, of course, they get, I'm pretty sure it's three feet on each side of their mark, so it's like they get all of this room to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes the marks are off and sometimes you you hit some stuff, which obviously you don't want to do that, but... Obviously, if you're anywhere around a mark, you want to be shoveling for a little bit, at least until you find the utility. Yeah. Um, I've, I mean, I've hit, I will say I've hit some cable lines with, like, a shovel. Because sometimes they're buried, like, six inches deep, so. Yeah, you're not expecting No. It. Yeah. No. It happens. And it's, you just, and it's. Just hoping that <laughs> fiber optics yeah. are not gas yeah. or electric. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's crazy, man. Yeah, so um, we'll kind of land the plane here, but, like, what – Jolly, like, what has your experience been like here? What's your favorite part of, about working here? Um, yeah, tell me a little bit. Uh, my favorite part about working here is the people. Um, I mean, I have worked at other places. Um, not, I'm nothing bad to say about the other places I've worked at. Mm-hmm. However, I will say – Working here, this is, like, the greatest bunch of people that I've worked with ever. Um, I feel like the cool thing is everyone's, like, for the most part, pretty young, like, around the same age. Mm -hmm. Um, Not to where there's, like, an age gap to where it's, like, you know, not awkward to talk, but, like, you know, you can say one thing and then an older person might not get it or same, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the people that work here are really nice. Um... It's owned by, you know, a young man who's very cool, you know. You got you. Molly's awesome. Paige is awesome. Um, and then over in excavation, I mean, we got a bunch of young dudes, minus Randy. You guys got uh, man, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it's fun working with each other. Um, we were there for each other. We could help each other with a lot. Um, I've had an awesome experience working here. I mean, Everyone's here to help, you know, no one's going to give you crap for not knowing something when you're brand new. Um, I'd say it's a a very fun learning experience. You work with 
I mean, it, it really does feel like a family working here. Um, I know a lot of the guys in excavation. I mean, I could text if I needed something outside of work, and they would, you know, not hesitate to come and help or, you know, answer the phone. Um, and then same with them. You know, I think we have a lot of good guys here and women. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would say everyone's here for each other. Um, it's very family-oriented, I would say. You know, I get plenty of vacation time, so um, I'm about to go to North Carolina next week, and then yeah. sometime in August I'm going to go on another vacation. So yeah. um, it's awesome working at a place that cares about you and your family, I would say, because, you know, you get time outside of work to do whatever you want, decompress, and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you have the resources as well to to succeed, too. And there's a lot of opportunity here as well. Yeah, it's awesome, man. It's great. Um, last question is just, like, customer stories. Any crazy customer stories or just, like, cool customer interactions, um, things that you're just like, yeah, this is, this is a pretty cool job that I get to meet people or whatever it is. Well, I'm not really around the guy, but right now I'm doing a job for the co-CEO of Kona Ice. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. Um, That's cool. I have done a job for, um, I forget his name, but he was in um, off double A, um, down towards Newport, I'll say. I f might not even be the area. Mm -hmm. Um but he was super nice. I mean, we had to do you know, that. The job had kind of changed a bunch, um, just from us like you know digging and finding stuff out, or like running a scope and then finding something else out. Um, we had put pipe in and then realized you know it had backfall. So I was like, oh, this isn't gonna fix. We need to fix more than just this. Um, but he was super cool. Um, he would help us like you know put stuff up to keep the dust down. Um, he would come out and chit chat with us, but not like over your shoulder, ask you know like what are you doing all you know. Mm -hmm. He had a a really cool house, and uh, he would gave us kind of like a tour. He had a like a pool bar, and there was all kinds of stuff in there. He had like a hand sink in there. I mean, it was it was really cool. Um, other than that, I feel like I do have another cool. We did a job in Clifton, too. There was a pretty big house, and, and they gave us a tour of it. It was, I mean, it's an old house, but it was huge. Mm -hmm. So, um. It's like you're part of, like, a, a, a home show. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Do you do the classic, like, when you're driving along with your girlfriend, being like. I do, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, work, I worked at that house. I worked at that house. <laughs> it's so <laughs> obvious that she doesn't care, too. <laughs> She's like, cool, yeah. But I always say it, regardless. Yeah. It's like I'm reminding myself, almost. <laughs> Get flashbacks. Yeah, I'll do, I mean I'll do it with with anybody in the car. If I'm like driving with a buddy, I'll be like, I worked at that house. I'll be like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Cool man. Well, you got anything else you want to talk about? Mm. Get on the record. Uh, you might not remember, but because Brady asked the question, but if me and Alex were to have a boxing match. <laughs> I have I got myself that, yeah. in under sixty seconds. <laughs> there you go. What's your signature move? What do you what do you, or you don't want to say because you don't want him to know? No, I go left jab, <laughs> right jab, left hook, right uppercut, <laughs> and it's done. Yeah, yeah, then it's done. <laughs> You've thought about this. I have. I have. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I did forget that. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. Nice, cool, dude. Well, thank you so much for for coming on, man. Like when you say that you're 22, 23, like it always blows my mind. Like even <laughs> I've known you, I'm just like, because the amount of like wisdom and just like professionalism that you bring to this place is like off the charts. Like thank you. it's I it's really that. cool, man. Like everyone recognizes that. Um, yeah, we're just really lucky to have you. So thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah.